Hi, I'm Bailey Marks, and I formerly was the International Vice President of Campus Crusade for Christ and had the privilege of ministering with Dr. Kim for more than 40 years. The relationship that we had was, uh, I like to think, was something that was very, very special. I knew that any time I needed Dr. Kim, I could call upon him and he would come running. And the same thing was true in terms of myself. And we had the joy to see God do unbelievable things during those, uh, those 40 years that we ministered together. And I'm often asked, what are the thoughts that come to my mind when I think of Dr. Kim? And Dr. Kim, for those that knew him, knew him to be a very quiet man, but he was a humble man. And not false humility, but genuine oh, humbleness that only Christ can generate in a person's life. He was willing to believe God for the impossible, for the ends of the earth. It, there was just never anything that was too big that Dr. Kim could, did not want to pray and believe God for. He set the example for people wherever he went of his prayer life and being willing to pray and fast uh, for many, many days at a time, for 40 days at a time. Kim was a man who wanted Korea to be used by God in a very, very special way. I remember distinctly a night in Dallas, Texas at uh, what was called Explo 72. And uh, there were about 80,000 students and laymen that were there at a Campus Crusade for Christ conference. And Dr. Kim was the speaker. And all of a sudden I heard Dr. Kim say, We are also planning for an international Explo 74, which we expect it will draw 300,000 people. And Elizabeth looked over at me and said, you didn't say anything about that. And I said, I didn't know anything about it to say anything about it. Well, I got back to my hotel room that night and then Dr. Bright called and said, uh, why didn't you forewarn me about the announcement? And I said, I would have been very happy to have forewarned you if I had known about it myself. Well, it so happened that while Dr. Kim was sitting there at Dallas, um, he just began to dream, oh Lord, would you do the same thing in Korea? And, and never always willing to believe God for a little bit more that 80 or 100,000 people wasn't enough, so he wanted 300,000 people in Korea. And his wife and the Lord were the only two people that he discussed it with, and he made the announcement. I invite you to join with us for that historic Jesus moment. Well, Dr. Bright said, well, our brother has made this announcement. Let's get behind him and do everything we can to see how we can make, the, uh, make it to come off from our point, from our side. And so we had people representation, large groups from people all over the world that were there. And God used Explo 74 in such a way that it really launched a spiritual awakening that uh, began to take place in the early 70s that is continuing today throughout the world, where people sat there and said, people from Africa, the Middle East, I talked, to, talked through the years of hundreds of people who were there, and they all said virtually, have said this, virtually the same thing. God, if you can do this in Korea, so short time after the Korean War and what have you, that you could do it in my country. And so they went home and began to believe God that he would. But Kim was a unique person. I mean, God just illumined his mind. Nobody had ever fed 300,000 people before. And not only in Korea, but probably any place else in the world. And so he went to place after place. How do I feed 300,000 people? And everybody told him he was crazy. And one day, God showed him how he could build a pressure cooker, a number of pressure cookers with superheated steam going into them and cook rice for 300,000 people twice a day. And it's just, how do you feed the people? If they were gonna be there for a week, they had to eat. And so, but it was just one thing after another that took place as a result of that. 
But I remember sitting with Dr. Kim shortly thereafter, and he began to say, God has laid upon my heart a tremendous burden that I want to see Korea to be the first Christian nation in the world. And he started praying for that, and he started believing God that he would have the privilege of seeing Korea, the first Christian nation in the world. And as a result of that came, uh, Here's Life Korea and the 80 World, is, uh, evangeliz the 80 World Evangelization Crusade. And where at Explo 74, on uh, the evening meetings, we had a million people. One night at the 80 World Evangelization Crusade, one evening we had, according to the police, three million people that were there. And Dr. Kim, that evening, challenged people, Koreans, to become missionaries to go to all the world. And today, here it is, uh, 30 years later, that there are literally thousands upon thousands, I do not have the number, but thousands upon thousands of Korean missionaries that are serving the Lord throughout the world. This is the kind of guy that Dr. Kim was, and you can see why I just considered a privilege to have been able to minister with him those many years. Thank you, and God bless you.